ABC Kindred Teach presents The Era Bullies of Liberty Street, written by Sam Swope, illustrated by Barry Root. Well, they look like they know how to have fun. Once there was a street called Liberty Street, and Liberty Street was lined with white houses that were so much alike, it was difficult to tell one from another. This was just the way Fat General Pinch and his skinny wife liked it. So they want everything to look the same and kind of boring. The Pinches spied on their neighbors all day long. Here they are, right here. They had nothing better to do. They hated anything that looked like fun. They got upset when Joy hung upside down from a maple tree. They got angry when Katie crept around like a tiger. They got furious when Jack spun around until he felt dizzy. And whenever the pinches got upset or angry or furious, the general would grab his bullhorn and shout, Oh, call him the army! And the fun would have to stop right then and there. When summer came, the pinches ordered the children to stay inside. Wow, they are not very nice. They're very, very bossy. And that's what a bullhorn looks like. The kids were miserable or very unhappy. So were their parents. But what could they do? Everyone was terrified or very afraid of the general and his army. And orders were orders. The children had to stay inside. It was a lonely time. General and Mrs. Pinch smiled nasty smiles and stood proudly at their windows, keeping a sharp lookout for fresh trouble or new trouble beginning. Tulips growing, robins building nests, that kind of thing. So anything that looked like fun. And whenever the Pinches saw anything they didn't like, the general would haul out his bullhorn. Oh, call in the army! He'd holler. Liberty Street was certainly clean and quiet. You had to give the Pinches credit for that. But you never heard any music or laughter there or saw any toys or happy children. It was a sad place. And that made the Pinches very glad. So they don't want anybody to have any fun. Oh, what a terrible bunch of people. Then one day the Arabulis came to Liberty Street and moved in next door to the Pinches. They gave the general and his wife a lot to look at. For one thing, there were dozens and dozens of them, children and moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-great-grandparents. For another, the Arabulis had pets. They had anteaters and porcupines, elephants, walruses, and sloths. Anteater, porcupine, walruses, and sloths. They even had a walk, a few papalocks, and a wild barumpus. Mrs. Pinch sucked in both cheeks. Disgusting! She hissed, I'll call in the army! Boomed the general. They were not happy about the new neighbors. But that didn't bother the Arabulis. They didn't speak English. They didn't know what those pinches were screaming about. Now, 
their bullies came from an island far away where people are born with colorful skin. Strangely enough, however, the Arab bullies were never the same color from one day to the next. For example, one day, Grandfather Arabuli might be orange, Auntie Arabuli blue, and Baby Arabuli pink. But Gramps could just as easily have woken up yellow, Auntie green, and Baby purple. You just never knew. So every day they changed colors and nobody knew what their colors would be, even them. At night, the Arabulis glowed in the dark. Revolting, squawked Mrs. Pinch, stomping her feet. Oh, go in the army, bellowed or yelled loudly in a deep voice, the general. The first improvement the Arabulis made to their house was to paint it with red and white zigzags. They decorated it with flashing colored lights and hung toys from the trees. Then they drew jungle scenes on the sidewalks and poured sand on the grass and made sand creatures. The Arabulis weren't the neatest people in the world, truth to tell, but they sure knew how to have fun. They put their furniture all over the yard and lived outside. They played outside, ate outside, and watched TV outside. The Arabulis even slept outside, all cuddled up like puppies in the biggest bed you ever saw in your life. They snored like crazy. The animals lived inside, in the shower, in the sink, under the stairs, and in the chimney. They ran all over the place. What a racket they made. Wow, they sure like they sure look like they have a lot of fun. No noise, screeched Mrs. Pinch, shaking her bony fists in the air. And you can guess what the general hollered. I'll, I'll call in the army, right? But no matter how much the pinches screamed, the air bullies didn't pay any attention. They were having too much fun. General and Mrs. Pinch were miserable or unhappy. All this happiness was making them sick. Things were getting out of control. Why? Before they knew it, all the children of Liberty Street were outside playing Bula Nula Ball. This has got to stop, shrieked Mrs. Pinch, her eyes popping out of her hand. Just then, Joy clobbered or hit hard the Bula Nula ball. It went up and up and up until, oh no, it crashed through the Pinch's window and smashed into the General's stomach, pow, and knocked him flat. Ouch! roared the general. The pinches were out in a flash. This means war, wailed Mrs. Pinch. Oh, go with the army, cried the general, and he whipped out his walkie-talkie. Call me an army, he thundered. Attack! Liberty straight at dawn! Then the pinches stormed home and slammed the door, but not before their cat Naomi had escaped and gone to the Arabuli's house to live. The Arabuli smiled and shrugged, but the rest of Liberty Street was in a panic. They were really worried. The army was coming. Doors were locked and blinds were pulled down tight. Everyone was terrified or very scared. Everyone, that is, but joy. Those mean old pinches, she thought. When their army comes, they'll take away the Arabulis. Well, I won't let them. I won't. And so she thought and thought and thought until she had an idea. She waited until night came and then, when the parents of Liberty Street were asleep, Joy tiptoed outside and sneaked around Liberty Street waking the other children and telling them her plan. What a neat idea, they said, because there wasn't a moment to lose. They had no time to waste. 
They all got busy right away, but they had to be very quiet so their parents wouldn't wake up. The children crept down to their basements and up to their attics. They dug through closets and drawers. They gathered together toys and balloons and finger paints. They rounded up scissors and wrapping paper and they pulled out decorations from Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Halloween. Then they went outside. Well, here they are outside. What are they going to do to these houses? Hmm. They must be decorating them somehow, but why? Some of the children colored the houses and pasted animal cutouts in the windows. Others decorated the trees and painted the sidewalks. They put toys everywhere and dragged furniture outside. They worked all night long. The last thing they did was to paint one another's faces. The Arabulis snored through it all. It was almost dawn when they were finished. Liberty Street had never ever looked wilder or more colorful and the children were very proud. Hmm, why did they do that to their houses? They made them look like the Arabuli's house for some reason. Hmm. Before long, they heard the angry rumble of the army approaching. The ground shook. Soon there were guns and bombs and helicopters and thousands of soldiers marching past the colorful homes of Liberty Street. Now, armies, of course, don't think. They only follow orders and General Pinch's orders were very clear. Oh, there's a house on Liberty Street. Oh, that's different, he roared from his window. It's disgusting. Get rid of it and get rid of the weirdos who live in it. And so with those orders in mind, the soldiers marched up Liberty Street. But all they saw were brightly painted homes and colorful people. No house was different. No one was weird. The soldiers didn't know what to do. Hmm. Okay, colorful, 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 plain. <gasps> That's the Finch's house. It's different because it's plain. But when they finally reached the end of Liberty Street, there it was, a different house, plain and white with a fat, angry man and a nasty, skinny woman inside. That's them, shouted the army. They're the weirdos. Charge! ordered the general, and the army did just that. The soldiers surrounded the house and tied it up with ropes. Not! Us, you idiots, squealed Mrs. Pinch. I'll go in the army, cried the general. But the army was already there following orders. And so it was that the Pinches and their house were yanked from the ground and dragged far, far away as the children cheered and the air bullies waved goodbye and the terrible Pinches were never seen on Liberty Street ever again.